Hi, I'm Matt from HockeyReviews.ca, and this is part one of the NHL replica jersey timeline, which will basically be uh, a description of the evolution of the NHL replica hockey jerseys. So we'll start off with this early 90s CCM replica jersey and end off with the Reebok replicas that came out this year, specifically for the Toronto Maple Leafs. All the videos can be found in the description below as well as the jersey video playlist on my channel. The next videos after this will be found at the end of the video as well through the, the title, the ending card. Hopefully this will shed some information on just the differences between how logos are sewn, the different materials, and just where the, the league has come and the ups and downs of basically the replica jerseys throughout the years. So we'll start off with this Quebec Nordiques jersey. Uh, I can't tell you when this was made for. Someone else probably could. But this was when I was very young. Um, as you can see, it's made by Sports Masca. Or Masca, as it says here. But as you can see down there, Sport Masca. I'm probably saying that wrong, so I apologize for that. These were made in Canada. And this is, as you can see, air knit material. Now, wouldn't it be great if all modern jerseys had this little detail on it? That would be just absolutely fantastic. So this jersey is kind of interesting. As you can see, the material is air knit. So it's better than uh, the new style of jersey that is on the Premier jerseys. This one does still pill, as you can see. It does have pilling, but it does it less. And in my opinion, the materials are better. Um, the logo itself is... Now, I can't tell you if this held up well or if it's kind of cheap because it's so old. Um, but as you can see, it's all embroidered and sewn detailing as well as on the sides. Now, the interesting thing is, as you can see, it's peeling up from the corners. So you'd think that's not sewn, but if you do look, it is sewn on. But the outside stitching, which is not actually onto the jersey, instead... It's a single tiny stitch layer, as you can see here. Now, that's kind of interesting. I'm not sure how the authentics of these were back in the day, as in if this part was actually stitched all the way on the inside, and this is just how to make it cheaper. But that's how it is in this jersey, as it is. Um, the other interesting thing is these logos are, as you can see, just I think this is called screen printing. You can see it cracks. Now. The kind of interesting thing about this is the actual authentic jerseys and the ones they wore on the ice had a similar detailing. So this wasn't a patch or it wasn't sewn on. It was just screen printed. So I can't really blame them for cheaping out on quality here if it was also done that way in the uh, authentic and game warrants. The interesting thing about this to me is that I believe that this would have been more before... Um, this would have been like this jersey would have been created before sublimation was a big thing. I think if sublimation took off, as in if the jersey was recreated today, this would be sublimated into the jersey rather than uh, screen printed on. So the shoulder patches are the exact same. Uh, so we'll just take a quick look at the back of the jersey. And the back here, uh, sorry, I'm just looking for a a, a, another like tag, but there wasn't one. So here's. The back of this one as you can see it doesn't have the embroidered uh, CCM patch it's again printed on and you can see the cracking um, again I can't comment if this is how the authentics were I never had one I have to go buy pictures but everything back then is a lot less uh, like standardized so you I don't really know what I'm gonna look at and that's not my expertise this came out when I was basically born so I'm not uh, this this whole jer this generation of jerseys kind of before me, and it's not totally of my interest. I'm just showing it because I have one. Uh, but that's basically it for the Quebec Nordiques. Sewn, I'll bet, uh, weekly, like with a really uh, sm small stitch with out on the outside, and just the layers are pull pulling up. But it is Airnet, and it's a pretty decent material. So we are going to move on to the original Phoenix Coyotes away jerseys. And this is customized with Javi Bullen. And this was one of my favorite jerseys growing up. So we'll just go over some details on this. It is a starter. It is made in Korea, as you can see there. It has the NHL player tag because it was customized uh, as a Javi, like with the NHL kit. 
Now, an interesting thing about this is when Starter made jerseys in the NHL in the 90s, some of their authentics were also made, I can't remember if they're Korea or somewhere else, but their actual authentic jerseys were also made overseas. I'm not sure if the game ones were or not. Should have did some more research on that, but that was the case for some of the authentics as well. Now, this jersey is kind of interesting because it moves away from an, the air in it that the CCM material was, and it moves to uh, this material. And just, just for reference, we'll pull the CCM one next to it. So that's the older uh, Nordiques, and this is the newer starter uh, Phoenix Coyotes jersey. So this Coyotes uh, jersey does have some pilling on it, as you can see, right there. But it does have some pretty interesting details. The logo is pretty nice, if I do say so myself. Uh, the detailing is pretty great. It's very intricate and it is sewn on, which is a nice feature. Um, also, it has this, the interesting design on here, which I'm not sure how this is done. I'm not sure if this is sublimated or not, but this design is uh, one of my favorite things on, on these hockey jerseys and it was just a new thing at the time. Um, but it's, it's a different type of material. I think this style would have worked much better on the Nordic jersey instead of the screen printed logos. So another thing about this jersey, we'll just look at the collar was very thick and again, very intricate designs, which I'm again a fan of. Uh, this material is throughout the jersey. It doesn't change on the back or front. It's all the same material everywhere. The logos for the patches on the sides are actual patches and they're embroidered as you can see. So they, that is some great detail. Now, I cannot tell if, so they are sewn, as you can see right there. You can see the stitching going into the jersey, but the jersey has a double layer shoulder or else it's sewn, yeah, it has a double layered shoulder, as you can see there, so you can't see the stitching there, but you can actually see the stitching into the jersey. So that's very nice. That's a very, that's a very high end jersey. It's very close to being authentic. In fact, it gets even kind of cooler with that in that the elbows are double layered elbows, which was also a feature on authentic jerseys. So as you can see, there's, there is the extra layer for the elbow right there, or actually it's, yeah, it's sewn in there. And you can see it through the sides. Again, that is a big feature for that. Like that's how authentic jerseys are made now. And to me, that's pretty awesome that this replica, which again, it's a replica, it is size large, um, that this replica has that. It doesn't have a fight strap or anything. So as you can see, no fight strap there, just the numbers. And again, that's like this, this jersey was fantastic quality and this, it is made overseas and yet it's, the material isn't, quite as nice as the other air knit, but it has the double shoulders, it has the double elbows, and the quality of it is pretty fantastic. So I have to say the starters were pretty great in that sense. Uh, one of the other big things I really liked was they had the Western and Eastern Conference logos at the bottom, which I thought was an interesting feature. Um, eventually these turned to the team logos as well. But anyways, I thought that was always a nice little touch. They also started with the logos on the actual sleeve of the jersey itself. But again, so this is the uh, starter Phoenix Coyotes uh, replica jersey from like their, when they first started out. And huge fan of it, it was one of my favorite ones. And the quality on this replica was really, really, really good. This jersey we're gonna look at is a Montreal Canadiens away jersey. And this is a Jose Theodore jersey. So we're looking at just after the 2000s. Um, and this one is made by Coho. And it's just a normal replica. It is that air knit material, just like the Quebec Nordiques one. It is, here's the inside patch. It is made in Canada. I also wore this for goalie all the time. So there's some black marks on it um, when I played as a kid. Uh, so yes, the logo itself is a very nice logo. As you can see, embroidered onto the, the logo itself and patch, but it is not sewn on. 
it is glued on. So now we lost that nice, uh, I guess, durability of the stitching there, which is kind of a shame, but this material is very good as well. I think it's better than the starter one. It's a little thicker, it's more of the pro material. We do not have the double elbows. There's just normal jersey here, and I don't think we have double shoulders either. Or if it's just how like the shoulders are made, because actually we do have double shoulders too, so we got that. Um, but yeah, no double elbows. This isn't like a, that close to being game. No fight strap. This isn't sewn. The logo, as you can see right here, is now on the sleeve as well. On the back, just to show, we have no fight strap. We have this NHL logo on the back. We start to get the branding at the top of the jersey, as you can see right there. And we lose the branding at the bottom, and now it just shows the NHL logo. And something that's kind of interesting is, we'll see this tag, and it might look familiar, which is the Airnet tag by Sport Masca, made in Canada. So again, this is the same company that made the Quebec jerseys, it's just the evolution of it. Now these jerseys were very good, um, even with out the stitched crest, I think these are fantastic. Um, these are also very similar to the new vintage jerseys you can buy from the NHL, which are made in Canada. Uh, so like this cut, it, it's pretty close to this cut. The material is pretty close to it. The logo quality is really like, close to it. Um, so yeah, those are pretty good quality jerseys as well as this one. And so I bet, think that's about it for the Theodore jersey. Actually, one thing that I didn't bring up so far, and I'll do it really quick, is the sides are not cut as you can see there are not cut right there so it just it's basically like a, a normal jersey cut again over here on the sides not cut and I, I bring that up because the premier jerseys coming up do have that part cut and it's just some odd designs when they switch to the edge so yeah all these jerseys so far fit just like the authentics a little bit smaller um but yeah that's about it so that is all for the part one of the NHL replica jersey history. We're going to end here and we'll move on to the next one, which will be again linked below and will be at the right after this part. There'll be links to it. So thank you for watching. Uh, please check out my other jersey videos in the playlist from my channel. Check out the written reviews with photos and everything like that linked in my website in the description as well as please subscribe to me on YouTube, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I hate promoting that stuff, but getting more subscribers and followers helps me get more uh, products so I can review and talk about. Like For example, I can't get a Toronto St. Pat's jersey yet. If I had more, I might already have a video on that. But anyways, thank you very much and take it easy.